What is going on, everyone? Uh, we're here with a new segment that I've been kind of wanting to do for a while here. This uh, isn't really a review. It's uh, what I'm calling the talk with the toys. Uh, it's basically where I'm going to try to do this either as a, like, maybe bi-weekly thing or a monthly thing, but basically, or it just could depend on the volume of what's coming in, but I'm basically just going to be showcasing a lot of the new stuff that I've been getting in. Um, it's a quick way to not really review everything, but also, you know, get the information out there, tell you what I think is neat about each one, um, little kit bashes I've been doing, little mix-ups, all that good stuff. But we're really just here, you know, to just talk about the toys and talk with them. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get into it now. So for me personally, um, Hasbro has been really killing it with these Transformers lately. Um, I know the general reaction on Legacy has been kind of, I don't know, average, I want to say. I know a lot of people were very hesitant on seeing how the combiners were going to be, um, the release schedule for that. I know a lot of people weren't fans of the RC look. Um, but you know, after having, I already knew this was going to be great. I already knew Laser Optimus was going to be completely badass, and he is. Um, the only thing I would change to him is, um, he's a great looking piece of plastic, but the legs, ooh, they're just too gray for me. If they took some of this yellow and gave it to him on the crotch piece here, like how the normal Optimus has it, he'd, he'd be absolutely perfect. But, um... He is missing that little bit of yellow, and it's, you know, it's probably accurate to what they're recreating. But uh, with that said, Rule of Cool always still stands, because um, I'm sure Laser Optimus didn't have this little thingy originally, but he has it here. <laughs> Either way, still a great figure, very fun transformation still with him, and I really like these new Energon weapons. Uh, I'll bring them out here real quick, but it's nice that we're getting all these Transformers lately with um, melee weapons. And unfortunately, um, you can't... Let me pull it out here. Ooh. Unfortunately, you can't um, change... I keep talking and not having anything ready. But you can't uh, change and put this in an older figure because it's got that little indent on the top there. Now, you can give it to a figure that has the... Uh, closed, I mean, uh, open fists or grip hand like Optimus has, but if you, say, want to swap out swords with Starscream here, you can't do it because the sword, it's not going to fit. The, the peg hole, it's not going to work. But with that said, you know, Optimus can, you know, still use Starscream's sword if you want. Like, um, yeah, and I really like the look of that, the red and blue, the, the hilt matching him and the blue matching him it looks really nice and i was kind of debating if i wanted to have him with these swords but i couldn't really do it because then you know this sword would be getting wasted no one could hold it really properly uh but very fun stuff this is a big figure for me because uh i was always a big fan of bulkhead but i never had any of his toys um when transformers animated came out i thought it was legitimately the coolest freaking thing on the planet because it was the first time me, as a little Detroit City boy, ever had anything besides Robocop I felt that I was watching that was based in my city. And it was, you know, it was little things. They referenced Woodward every now and then. Lake Orion was a big thing. But, you know, it was cool just to have a show talk about, you know, local stuff that I knew about. And it was just, had a little feeling in me every time I just heard them say Detroit in <laughs> the show all the time. But Bulkhead made his debut on that show. And um, he was a character I just, you know, fell in love with. He was goofy. He was uh, really klutzy. I really liked his little whoop, his little uh, melee bits he had with these ball hands. And they gave it to him on here, and it's really cool. Uh, my only nitpick is they should have given us two of them so we can put them in each hand. But it's still, it's still fun regardless. He's got a great... Let's get him a little, a little closer. I think his head sculpt is pretty good, too. He's just a really good... Uh, Transformer altogether, like he's. I know a lot of people were hesitant on him because, uh, sorry about that. He was announced and uh, it was revealed that this whole like cab part is all this translucent plastic, and it is. Like you, you lift it up, you can all see it's like you know blue in there and whatnot. And you know mine has 
like a little scratch over here somewhere that you can kind of see through it. And I can definitely see this guy becoming a pain in the future after a few shelf dives and he gets more and more scuffed potentially. But um, it's bulkhead, man. Like, he's going to get in some tussles. Like, I'm okay with that, I suppose. We're all used to Siege by now. <laughs> but very good stuff. Hasbro has been killing of Transformers. I'm very excited for the next wave of Legacy. I don't know if you guys saw the live stream, but we're getting Tarantulas. Gets to fill up that Beast Wars Predacon shelf. And uh, Knockout. Oh, my God. Everybody's favorite gay Decepticon scientist that's obsessed with his body. We finally get a new... Uh, I think it's a jazz retool of him, and it looks spectacular. Blitzwing was already leaked. We already know all about that, and I'm here for it. Uh, with that said, let's move on to the next stuff. Guess what? It's more Transformers. All right, so uh, up next, I'm going to be talking about these little bot bots here. These are really cool. Um, I was going somewhere for work, and there's a City Trends by me, and I was like, hey, might as well hit it up and see if they got any clearance Marvel Legends. And they did not. Well, they did. They had uh, Captain Marvel. Oh, yes. I know we're all looking for that. <laughs> um, but uh, they had these bot bots. And there were like, I think there was like a five pack I got with them. And I had a little mystery one in each one of them. So I guess it was technically a six pack. All three bucks. Um, I cleared out probably a good half of their stock. Um, but they're really fun. Um, I know I just these just came on my radar when they were announced by Pulse. And... They have that show on Netflix, and to my knowledge, I've watched a couple of episodes. I don't think any of these characters are in the show. Um, only the new assortment that's going to be on Pulse is people that are in that show. But these are really cool little uh, robots. Like, um, let me get that focus here. They're little fun, easy, quick steps. Like, this guy's a coffee cup, right? And I love the personality in all these things. Um, this is a little coffee cup guy. You know, you'll stick out his legs here. His arms oof, pull out a little bit. Uh, yeah, I know you're not going to see any of this. You're not going to see any of it because my hands are doing the work. Uh, but, ta-da! <laughs> Here he is in all his ca caffeinated glory. Um, yeah, these are cool. Um, I like them. They're little, they're fun little desk buddies. And as I said, I love the personality of all of them. Like, you know... This guy looks, <laughs> and he just looks like a little guy that needs his coffee, and I like this, he looks kind of like a businessman to me, he's got this little tie looking thing in the front, and they've got a bunch of different types, um, this one's my personal favorite, the, the, the rubber ducky one, um, if you want, you can kind of have a half fan mode, you can turn the head the other way, and now it's just a, it's just a duck, and you can, quack, 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 <laughs> fun stuff, um, and there's even like, this guy, I don't like him at all. He's, like, way too, like, evil for me. Like, so you start him out like this. He's a robot. And this guy's clearly a Decepticon of some sort. If he's not, he's up to no damn good. And then you, you fold his hands. You lift up his tummy. Put the legs in there. Fold this up. This little shit is a baby carriage. And he's looking at your kid like this the whole time. Man, that is evil. <laughs> good stuff um yeah they've got a little something for everyone i suppose in them a lot of them are inanimate objects um they're they're my bad they are all inanimate objects but um some of them range from devices uh to food so like we've got the pumpkin guy here we've got the candy corn guy here they're really fun and a lot of these will be um actually retooled and remolded for the new wave because um I know this guy, my personal favorite one, he's going to be turned into, like, is it a mallard duck? I don't know. The, the ducks with the green heads and the the whitish, brownish, speckled bodies or whatever, he's going to look like that, not the squeaky rubber duck. Cool, cool stuff. I probably won't collect a lot of these, but um, it's definitely something I can see myself kind of getting in the rabbit hole for. Like, I'm not going to go buy the big 30-pack ones or whatever, but, you know... These come my way at City Trends. I ain't gonna say no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's it for Transformers. Uh, moving on. Oh wait, I lied. I lied. I lied. This thing is awesome. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a Scout class Transformer from uh, 
the Michael Bay movies. It's a it's a forklift, and it's a transformer. Um, <laughs> it's just really cool. It's a it's a fun little tiny guy. Um, holy shit! Can I hold up? Wait. Can I fit a mez kit in there? No. Well, I tried. But it's a it's a nice fun scale. Mega Constructs little minifigure guys, they scale great with uh, Transformers. And now you can have you know little guy next to this if you want. Just some universe building. You know I'm all about my photography and posing. So you know if I want to get a forklift just for a photo for a backdrop, this is a cool one. You know, and even despite him being a small size, you know a forced perspective. I can have the guy really close up and you know it can make it look like it's a big forklift to the camera. Just a lot of fun creative stuff you can do with it. Um, I don't know why I keep saying I'm done with Transformers because uh, I don't even think this is the last one. Uh, I would transform it for you but um, I don't feel like it. Maybe at the end I will and you'll get a quick cut of that but uh, for now, no. Uh, moving on to the next one. Alright y'all, last Transformer crap I promise. Um, as a cameraman this is probably my favorite team of Decepticons behind the Stunticons for just being cool as hell. <laughs> um, but uh, this just got back in stock at Entertainment Earth. Well, not just, but when I got them, it did. And they had a nice little juicy, like, 10 or 15% off your whole order. So I picked them up and uh, something else. I don't even remember what it was because they were the highlight. But these guys are cool as hell. Like, um, it's fun to get a set of Transformers and have them be really modular and have them be able to like kit bash and move stuff around and you can really tailor these guys to all look pretty unique to you um there's a few accessories there's one accessory I didn't use they came this is the uh the side part of the camera let me pull it up this is basically where you know your shooting button would be if I was holding the camera all that crap but uh as an accessory it's supposed to like go on the side of their arms. It looks really ugly. It hinders the articulation. It's a dumb shield to me too, especially when the shield alternatives are having these big sexy lens arm pads instead. Like look at that. That's glorious. That's that's pure robotic sex right there. Um, the colors are great on all these guys. When I was looking through the pictures I thought this was going to be my favorite because the yellow just pops on his chest here. But uh, as I was playing around with them, I really just dig this black and red because as I'm looking at my Transformers shelf, there's not much red there, especially not next to black. So it's kind of cool to see this on him. It's a color scheme you don't really see that much. And if the Decepticons weren't so set on purple, I'm sure in a even more shattered glass <laughs> universe, the Decepticons would be rocking the red and black because it's a tight color, let me tell you something. Um, I couldn't imagine owning the regular set of all these guys basically looking like this one, because that's boring as hell. This, These toy colors on these guys, phenomenal. I just love the modular stuff you can do on them. Just taking out stuff like these shoulder pads and putting them other places. The only thing that sucks is like, even though, you know, obviously these accessories are meant for them, a lot of them can't really be put on other guys, like these shoulder pads, for example. They're like specifically meant for his little locking things on his uh, top part. But they all have them. So even though the instructions say this guy should be saying refractor on his shoulders, you can give it to any of them. You can make any of these guys a little short Ultra Magnus if you feel like it. And I dig it. Um, the only problem is I don't know where to put these guys on my shelf because my <laughs> Transformer shelf is already packed. I'm not realizing how much I'm collecting these guys. I'm still thinking I'm mainly just buying action figures, but at this point, my collection is pretty 50-50 split between robots and action figures, so I need to make some shelf space soon for these boys, especially with oh, Legacy coming out. Goodness. Uh, moving on. Yoink. 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 All right, so uh, I told you about new action figures that I'm getting and whatnot, but uh, let's talk about some crap I already have that I've been messing around with. And uh, this is one of my kit bashes that I've been working on and liking a lot. It's uh, the base body is the Cosmic Ghost Rider. Um, we've got a, ooh, I believe it was the Walmart exclusive Black Panther that had like the purple like lines going through his work, but I gave him those claw hands. He's got the Demogoblin build-a-figure head, and this glorious cape is from, uh, 
whatever they're doing that comic line for black series and this is the one that was that imperial guard that they misspelled or complete they didn't even misspell they gave him the wrong character name and that's why it's super confusing for me to even remember it but i think it was connor jacks or something like that but uh i want i bought him just for this cape because it was dope as hell i mean look at it this red lining with this cosmic purple out oh beautiful and uh I was trying to like make some kit bashes and I wanted this like cool little like space vampire. I was reading um whatever Donnie Cates' little uh uh vampire space graphic novel he made of image comics. But I was reading, I was feeling super inspired, and I was like, what's what's evil? Vampires, Jeff Bezos, ultimate vampire. And now this is my Jeff Bezos custom, because in my alternate reality um, oh, this could be our reality, just, you know, need a few years, potentially. But I'm imagining he goes to space to find the secret of more immortality so he can become even more wealthier, and then he becomes a vampire, comes back, makes more vampires, which are just Amazon workers, and, uh, yeah, this is Jeff Bezos. <laughs> um, yeah, but cool cape, I love the look. Um, I also did a little paint on him, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a bit more sparkle to him than he normally would because I gave his whole, not his whole body, but everything that was metallic, I gave it a nice little sparkly coat. The pads from the spikes came out phenomenal. It's not super noticeable on everything else, but on there, it really shines for me, quite freaking literally. But uh, yeah, fun kit bash, thought I'd show it off real quick. While we're on this side of town, let's show off the alternations. Um. This is a really cool figure. This is a very slept on line. Um, and I'm someone that likes action figures that really don't have, you know, any IPs attached to them. But he's really cool because he's got this big ass gun. And we like big ass guns. But uh, his sculpt is just really good too. His joints can be a little loose at times. But, you know, for a big fig, he can pose around decently. And he's got this cool little crane in the back. He also came with this other, not as big as the other one, but it's still a big ass gun nonetheless. Like, pretty, pretty beefy, meaty boys, for sure. Uh, he's, a, he's just a cool guy to have in the background of shots, like a little bounty hunter. If you want to fill out a little cantina shot, just put this sucker somewhere in the background by the jukebox. Like, no one's going to notice. Like, it's, it's fun. I like him a lot. Uh, probably won't get any more alternations because I don't like the designs of all of them, but you know. If you get me a big mech and tricks yogurt blue and purple colors, your boy gonna cop it. <laughs> Easy peasy. Alright, let's see if we can stick him back in here without killing anyone. Alright. You can kill Jeff Bezos, that's fine. Bezco Spider Man 2099. Don't mind me putting all his many hands over there. <laughs> this guy's pretty cool for somebody that's in his pajamas right now, to be honest. Um. The sculptum is pretty good. I know a lot of people are worried about, uh, you know, the Mezco uh, body suit and whatnot getting in the way of articulation. But um, I don't really notice any of that with him. The head sculpt on this is pretty gnarly. Um, like, you can see his face through it. And I think that's really dope. It's not, you know, soft fabric like the rest of the body. It's a solid piece of plastic. But it's, it's, it's really nice to see that nose, that mouth coming through the brow. It's a really dope head sculpt. I love the detail on it. And all the little red uh, etchings off the sides of the main lines are really nice looking. Uh, and the fact that like we've got the whole suit, like the red stripe just coming through the top, like built on top of it. These are also very sharp. You can, I almost got my eye with this. I was crying, boy. The cape, man. It's kind of dinky, I ain't gonna lie. Like, you can barely see it from the front, and that's a problem for me. Like, when I think of Spider-Man 2099, I feel like the cape should at least be, like, down here, you know? Some extra length, um, just to, like, spread it out more, because, like, even when I'm doing, like, photos with them, like, the cape doesn't get in there as much as I'd want it to. Like, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me. And the cape's so minuscule that I kind of don't even want it to be there half the time. Because it's like, why did you even give it to me if it isn't even, like, that good? Or at least give me a removable option. But that's just me being a nitpicky bastard. But aren't we all for collectors <laughs> at the end of the day? My last thing I'll rip on him for. 
Um, and it's it's a personal preference, but I'm not a fan of all the claw hands he has. Like, you've got these ones equipped, and let's see if I can find a different pair. You've got oh, these right here, and oh, camera angles, these right here. And, you know, I guess now that I'm holding in, it's a good one, but there's, like, no really good, like, hands where these little claw prongs are, like, faced out more. Like, they're all, like, in angles like this. There's no, like, open ones like that. And I'd like that to, like, recreate some different type of, like, you know, slashing attacks he'd do. And, like I said, you can do it with those, but the way the hand is shaped, it just doesn't feel like a natural flow of movement to me. And, you know, I could be a nitpicky bastard, but, uh, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> he's very fun. I'm liking the Mezco. Um, I'm, I've always, I've always loved Mezco. It's, they're a great brand. I'm never going to say they need to stop doing what they're doing, because they shouldn't. <laughs> but, uh, this guy is still cool nonetheless. If you're interested in him, I'd highly recommend to whatever the hell his price is at right now. I don't know. It's obviously more than what his pre-order was. But I'd be sure to try and get your hands on this sucker before Into the Spider-Verse 2 trailer drops because then everyone's going to realize they want him and it's going to go up, my boy. But with me having a Spider-Man 2099, I was messing around and doing some kit bashing. And I was like, who is he going to fight? Craven 2099. <laughs> I, uh, this is another kit bash, obviously. But, um, you know, I always hunt in my targets, I mean, not targets, my GameStops, and they've had a leader at at least all my GameStops, and he keeps going lower and lower in price. And last time I went, that sucker was $11. It was the first of the month, I had my GameStop 5 off coupon, I was like, run it, run it. <laughs> and I got him because I was like, you know, it's the leader, and... Eventually, we're going to get some more Hulk villains. I'm going to want to fill up the shelf. But for now, you know, it's a fun little kit bashing base body for, like, some sci-fi stuff. And I was testing around a bunch of heads. Nothing was fitting on them except Doctor Strange. So we had to go with that. And I was like, oh, Craven. <laughs> and then I pulled off my Sabretooth uh, back piece. Unfortunately, there's no back port for him here. But, you know, it can hang on him pretty decently. It's just hard to get some, you know, photography poses with it every now and then. But, uh... Fun little Craven 2099. Let's uh, let's get him here next to Spider-Man 2099. I think that's a fun match. I think it works. I could see. Oh, he smooth criminaled on me. Get out of here. Um, yeah. Quick kit bash. Moving on to the next thing. Uh, do do do. What is next? All right. So don't let my videos fool you. You know. I got a lot of Marvel toys, but deep down inside, I am strictly a DC boy at heart. Um, Batman Beyond was what I grew up with. I watched a bit of the Spider-Man animated, but Batman was really, you know, my calling as a child. And the only reason I don't have that many DC toys is because the quality isn't as good as I'd want it to be. But, you know, every now and then, I still take a dive. I test the waters and get some stuff. And uh, this one right here was... a. Uh, one I kind of just randomly came across at work. It's a, a designer series, Gordon, from, uh, I think it was Greg uh, Capullo, I believe. But he's a really cool piece. Um, I like the look of him. The glasses on Gordon. The hair is good. The suit is nice. And, you know, like, would I like a more articulated Gordon? Sure. But, like, you know, for now, I don't need a Gordon doing much. Like, you know, he can just be standing around on a rooftop at the bat signal. Or... <laughs> standing up straight next to Batman but uh you know he's a good he's a good looking Gordon and we surprisingly have not gotten one from Todd McFarlane but you know we've got a thousand Batman um but he comes with a cool pistol uh there's a walkie he came with as well which is a fun little accessory uh great piece he looks so good next to Hush Batman let me grab him I like that look a lot. Alright, going into some more DC stuff. I've, uh... You know what? Let's fill the gap. Fill the gap. Alright. 
So enough people wouldn't shut up about this thing, so I finally got it. DC Multiverse Todd McFarlane uh, Lobo. Um, the Storm Collectibles one is dummy expensive, so I settled for this. Um, he's pretty cool. He moves around pretty well. Uh, he's got some good posability. Uh, he looks like a space juggalo. Uh, let's see. Can we get that pose? Beautiful! I was really worried that this hook thing was going to be a very annoying accessory to like put on and whatnot, but it's very soft, um, bendable plastic. And even like the little collar part that goes around his hand, like you literally just... Can, I'm not going to pull it off because I don't like this angle for doing it. But you can pull it off very easily with ease and uh, he's a lot of fun. He scales pretty good with... Uh, let me, I guess let me bring Batman back, Jesus. Ooh. Batman looks so cool. <laughs> but yeah, he scales good with a uh, little boat. You know, we're just going to keep Batman out here. But yeah, he's a fun figure. His vest doesn't fully come off. It is a little molded at the uh, top there, so you can't pull that off if you wanted to. Well, as I'm looking in the back, his tank top does seem to be back here, too. So you probably could pull off this vest and give it to someone if you wanted. So that's kind of dope. Uh, but with that said, you know, it's a it's a good it's a good low bone for twenty bucks, I think. Yeah, twenty bucks. Uh, you know, McFarlane articulation can always be better. Thigh cuts would always be appreciated. Ankle tilt would always be appreciated. But for twenty bucks, you know, this sculpt, this character that you're not going to see that often, pretty good deal in my opinion. Oh man, we've got one of my favorites. Killer frickin' crack. Um, man, I, <laughs> Spider-Man and Batman, let me get this up, have just the coolest rogues gallery to me, man, and Killer Croc has always been one of my favorites. And he's really cool, he's a, he's a Build-A-Figure from, uh, the Mattel days, and I think, uh, a bit of his body mold was used for the King Shark Build-A-Figure they did later on. Um, the only thing added on to him was this little gold chain from uh, Mezco, Cousin Eddie. But he's a great scale, man. He's got this awesome... Let me actually... Let me take this chain off real quick. An articulated jaw and a big boy. Um, and he's a big boy with a jaw. He can get in a ha-ha-ha-ha pose very easily. Like Batman just told him the funniest joke he's ever heard since he's gotten out of Arkham. Um, good stuff. Obviously, he freaking hulks over this guy um speaking of hulks i've never done this but uh let me see what he looks like next to another big green boy oh yeah you know now that i'm looking at this if you wanted you could totally like get a custom head sculpt for him and you could now have an abomination that's articulated well and can rival this hulk because there's a lot of good, you know, Marvel Legends abominations on the market, but they're all too small for the perfect Hulk that is Marvel Select, you know? Like, I collect Legends, but this is, this is my, this is my Hulk for the shelf forever. Um, their Titanium Man is also pretty great. Um, I only buy their big figures for Diamond Select because those ones are always going to be a nice bang for your buck, for sure. Uh, and, uh... Moving on to the next little DC guy, we've got another big hunkin' chunkin' boy. A big pile of toy crap, you know what I mean? And I'm talking about this big mother chuck. <laughs> this guy is like crazy in person. Um, sorry, my desk is cluttered here. Alright. Jesus. Oh my god, hold on, I gotta... <laughs> this freaking guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got this one, another GameStop order. They've been they've been kind of killing it lately. I ain't gonna lie. Let me also uh, lower this for y'all. This is a phenomenal sculpt. Now. Anyone that knows me knows I will trash talk Todd McFarlane all day long. But whenever Todd does a big action figure, at least nowadays. It's, it's, it's always going to be top tier. Maybe some little extra accessories like a hand swap part would be cool because I know they gave that for um, Swamp Thing as well. 
the sculpt is breathtaking on this guy. Like, let's come across his back here. You've got all these freaking horrifying faces coming out of his body, like, everywhere. Like, all these just, I don't know if it's supposed to be him, like, not being able to figure out what he wants to look like, or if it's just people trapped in this boy. But, um, it's a great figure, man. Can, he's got a pretty decent <laughs> wingspan. He can really look like he's just hulking over people all the time. And, uh, the jaw, baby. Oh my god, it comes down. He's got some disgusting teeth in there. Look at those dis disgusting deposits of bone. Oh, wait, look at that. Oh my god. God, let's get in there. Let's get in. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> really, really cool. I've been really wanting to fill out my DC shelf and it's been hard to do it because, you know, I'm, I'm basically just waiting on Mafex to pump out stuff. That Nightwing coming out, beautiful looking by the way. But it's nice to get some uh, of Batman's rogues gallery from uh, some of these other lines here. It's nice to get Killer Croc. Uh, I got Killer Croc and Clayface within like 48 hours of each other. And it was kind of cool to have both these big boys around Batman. I've got some really fun photo shoots I want to do soon coming up because now I have Batman, I have Gordon, I have police station photo set, and I have Clayface, uh, Killer Croc, and Joker now. So I could do some fun little uh, photography with these guys if I wanted now. And I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, this is a great purchase. Um, I got them on sale. If you can get them on a sale price, I'd recommend it. Uh, if you like DC, if you like Clayface, if you like action figures, if you like big, crazy, freaking monsters, man, this is this is one for you. It's also kind of like not as heavy as I'd expected. Um, and one last thing I will say, his articulation is kind of nice in the chest area because he's got this like kind of like the little diapers McFarlane would give a lot of the figures lately, but it's on his chest, and you can get nice movement out of it there like you could have him doing the side step or the oh he's got some some booty hanging out over in there that's actually kind of cool you could probably like do some shit with that and have something coming out if you wanted if you were clever more clever than me but um yeah you can get some fun photos with this guy uh definitely a fun piece He's, he just has presence wherever you put him. This big, disgusting turd, man. <laughs> A lot of fun. Bam. Dope. Boom. Bop. All right. Um, this is a bumblebee that's worthy of buzzing. Uh, MDLX. Uh, basically, this is G1 bumblebee that was taken by some designers, or maybe one designer, at the 3-0 place, and they decided to pump out a non-transforming, highly articulated, highly detailed version of that Bumblebee's robot mode. So, I mean, you can see um, he's got a, a little uh, headlights and whatnot from his uh, vehicle mode there. So there are, you know, hints of the transfer transformation everywhere, but he just doesn't transform. And I have no problem with that. I have a pretty good bumblebee that transforms already. This is just a fun one to play around and pose with. They are also doing an Optimus Prime in this series. I don't know if they're doing anything after that, but I would definitely be down for some Decepticons. A Megatron on this line would be very interesting to see. Uh, at first I thought this was the design from the Bumblebee movie, but um, as I looked at them closer, I'm like, I don't think I've seen this anywhere else and did a little research. But yeah, this is all 100% original design. He comes with another alternate head that doesn't have this little battle visor on it, but this is awesome, so it's going to stay on all the time, and uh, a bunch of different extra opposing hands. Really fun, pretty well balanced too with uh, his big feet, so you can like get him in some kicking poses very easily, and I don't know if I can get it, but uh, the tires also move here a little bit. Yeah, that's fun. I like it. Just little details like that. He can be someone you gotta be a little cautious playing with. Like, when you wanna move a leg up, you gotta move his hip things up. When you wanna move an arm up, you gotta move these things up. Like, there's... You can't just play with him willy-nilly. You can't just, you know, start drinking, smoking some blunts, and be like, oh, I'm gonna play with my expensive $80 bumblebee, and, you know, break him immediately. I'm um, not saying I did that, but, you know, it could be possible. Uh, but, yeah, fun, fun stuff. Mm, moving on to the next one. Oh, you know what? We've already got the camera set up. Look at this sexy beast. Look at this. Look at this right here. 
This right here is a joy toy. And you know what toys bring me? Ooh, a whole lot of joy. Um, shit, what was this guy's name? I had the box right here, I swear. Where the box goes under this shit? So, uh, this guy is a joy toy, uh, 118th scale, obviously, for joy. Well, I guess some of them are 125th. But uh, this is the Hunter one from the Skeleton Forces Shadow Wing. It says it right here. Um, but he's really, really dope. Uh, he comes with some extra hands, a different gun. But I mean, fuck, man. Like, look at the sculpt on this thing. Look at the paint. Like, you can't tell me this thing is not tight. Let's uh, let's zoom in on it a little bit here. And let's actually just bring him closer instead, too. The paint on him is just... Mm, 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 mm. Uh, he's pretty well articulated, too. Like, you can get him in some really great little poses. Little jumpy crap right there for you. He's got another gun, too, but this one, I feel, just fits him better. Just look at that backpack detail. They just put a lot of love into these guys. His uh, secondary little weapon can be... Uh, put on the back here and uh, he's got like he's got two different knives this is one of them here but he's got another one as well and I also like him because of uh, this color scheme man like uh, let's put him back on the stand here but this uh, the second I got him I was like I was already in love with another toy when I got him in hand and that toy happened to be studio series brawn and they go really, really, really good together. Um, their colors pretty much match up. And it almost looks like because of the scale that like he could get inside of this guy and have it be a little mech suit for him. Like you could even... Dog, hold on, hold on, I need to try this. You can literally like do some photos of that and be like, oh, yep, about to get in. Like, <laughs> oh man, I didn't even think about that. This is why I like these. This is why I want to do this segment, because as I talk to myself, as we, you know, do these videos, I'll start to just kind of inspire myself to do things as I'm rambling, because I usually just get home and don't talk at all unless I'm referring to my cats. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you just start talking, thinking of things, and, you know, new stuff pops in your head. I already had the idea of him being a mech suit, but the photography option of that get in thing, because I forgot about his transformation, that's dope. Like, that would be a fun thing to do. Alright, and that was uh, our very first talk with the toys. Um, if you liked it, please let me know. If you hated this, and you're like, Jay, stop this format, this is dumb as hell, please tell me, and I'll stop and do something else as well. Well, I mean, if one person says it, I'm not going to stop, but if enough people say it, I'm like, alright, maybe it's time to do something else. But, uh, yeah, plan to see these, you know, bi-weekly, maybe monthly, just really, like I said, depends on the volume of toys I get. Some of them might just be like five toys. Some of them might be a whole bunch of them like this. But, you know, it also doesn't help. This is my first one. So there's a lot I wanted to fit in here that's come my way recently. But um, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you guys got some insights on some cool toys. Um, yeah. And uh, until next time later, uh, toodles, y'all.